we'll we'll chat again at the end. Over to you, Tom. Thank you, Lawrence. Good evening, everyone. Hope you're all well. Um, yeah, we can hear you well, Tom. <laughs> Perfect. Okay. So bear with me. Um, this is the first time I've ever done anything like this. Um, I'm just trying to help a few people if I can. And if you have any questions, just leave them at the end and uh, I'll see if I can answer them. So basically what I've done is I've done a few little videos of the daily routines that the farmer should be doing. Um, this is just based on what we do at home. Um, and obviously you, you get better results from doing the things that, that we do. Uh, well, everyone should be doing really, um, basics like changing the liners, filling your MQCC drum, uh, which is your somatic cell count, um, changing the brushes, cleaning the sensor, uh, 3d camera cleaning, doing the bleed holes, um, photo cell sensor, all these, all these things that could save you a breakdown, um, which, and they're, and they're going to take you seconds. Um, yeah, that's, that's basically what it's, what it is just to, just to save a couple of breakdowns and, um, help the farmer get a better, get a better milking robot, which will be more, more accurate. Right, I'm now going to change the liners, so I put the robot into service too, and then I loosen the cups, the mothership cups, loose, 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 and as you can see, the, on, the cups are gone loose, so to change the liners, lefty loosey, Do you want to go back to it? Okay. Don't get any twists on by the actual uh, plastic, not by the red line yet. inside. Right, so I've got the four old ones off. These will be thrown. Box of four new ones. These have been washed off. Just try them off now. See these are spotless now. It will help with um, problem solving later on if you do have problems. And on the liner there is a notch at the top. And on the liner tool there is a notch on the top of that. The notch needs to line with the other notch. And you need to squeeze it in to the same it should look like that. And then you feed it down through the liner, through the cut. It should just drop in. Get the top on first. That's the trickiest bit. And then you just pull the liner through and line the notch up with the knife and fork on the liner. That way the liner won't be twisted. And there you have it. The notch is in line with the knife and fork. A straight line, which 
means the liner is straight. And then you just repeat this four times. Very important to make sure that the liner is straight. Also, make sure that you have the, the O-ring on the bottom as you don't want any The cow manure going in there. <laughs> Like I said, it'll take you longer the first time, but um, once you've done it once, yeah, you should do it in yeah. five minutes, easy. So. What is this, man? Yeah. It's oh, A4. Uh, once in the morning, once in the night. But uh, obviously, if you've had a few dirty cows, they will need doing straight away, really. Um, like I said, there's, the more often you do them, the, the more reliable your, your bleed hole is going to be. So a, a very important job this is. At least twice a day, it should be done. Changing the cords. Now, this job isn't the easiest of jobs. Um, it's not always the cleanest, cleanest of jobs. Um, 
but it always needs doing. Uh, well, not always. Um, obviously, we we use sawdust here, so we've got strings. You can have chains if you're bedding on sand. Um, the strings come in three meter lengths, and then uh, you obviously cut off where the string is frayed, and then um, pull it through then with a with a new where you can feel the tidy string. As you can see in the video, um, I'm not sure how well you can see the video, but um, I try and uh, show you how to cut off the string here now. I had to just sharpen my knife but there. And as you can see, I cut off the first piece of string there now. And then I pulled through. And I've gone back to look at the string again because another four inches or so down the down the from the end of the string it's it, it's not going to last very long because you can see that it's weakened so i've just uh, i've just got rid of that extra piece there now and then you just tie an overhand knot in it i myself put in a double knot just so that you know it's not gonna it's not gonna pull through I put them as close as I can together and then I, I literally leave a centimeter of slack and then I push it all push it all into the into the cup so it's all it's flush. And you're always gotta make sure that the washer is between the plastic and between your knot. So obviously it's hitting the washer before pulling through. As you can see the 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 washer is in inside the plastic there. And then the, the fiddly bit is lining the two holes that hold the white plastic centering piece on the bottom of the of the cup. Sometimes it takes two minutes, sometimes it takes five minutes. It's, uh, yeah. Um, like you, all you need for this is a four mil Allen key and obviously a sharp knife, which I didn't have. Um, just don't lose that washer. If you if you happen to pull the string off and drop the washer, you will you you need to put a washer back in there. So um, try your best not to lose that washer. It's quite important. So that's the cup side. You always do the cup side first, and then. Go over to the other side. You really, you would have done this before doing the cup side, just untie the knot. I always take the washer off just in case it gets lost. Nothing worse than dropping your tools and they go down into the into the sun <laughs> and then they go into the slurry pit. That has happened to me once or twice. Right. So on, the, on this side there's also a washer which you put back, I put back on now. So the washer goes first again and then normally as a rule of thumb as the liner sits down where it's supposed to, I make the knot where the string comes to the top of the door. So if, as you can see there, I held the string against the door and the top of the door roughly is where the knot should be. Uh, as a rule of thumb, that normally works. Well, this time I was quite lucky to do it first time. It doesn't normally happen like that. And that's about the length of string you need when you pull firm. You should be able to see that notch from the bottom of the cup you've got in your in the right hand, you should see the notch of the liner is the bottom of the cup. 
that's really important that you don't have the string too long. If it comes too far above the cup, it won't retract all the way, and then you'll have you'll have floppy. Um, you'll have you'll have um, obviously it won't come back, and you'll have problems with washing and all sorts of problems. So the string needs to be pretty much perfect every time, because if it's too short, you'll have attachment problems. Um, yeah, so that string is pr pretty pretty important, and um, it needs to be they need to be checked. Obviously, maybe once a day or whatever, whatever you feel necessary. But um, I would definitely check them once a day at least. And then cleaning the teeth detection sensor. Base it's quite quite simple. If if the laser can't see the teats, it's not going to attach to the cow. I know some cows. You think that the laser's clean and. Um, it's not attaching, or you think the robot's going do lally. It might be another reason. Um, at, there's another video showing you how to calibrate the laser. That could be one reason. Um, there's, there's all the all these videos are pretty much um, they all add up to each other and uh, they make sense at the end. But that's a very important job. Oh no, this is calibrating the laser, sorry. Right, this job should be done once a day as well. Um, should be, it's done every service anyway, but um, for more accurate milkings, this, this, is, uh, this is your, um, your Bible then. I have four sticks. I know um, in the toolbox, I think there's only one, but it's the same process. You just put the one stick in and then you just do each quarter individually. And then you, all you press is start scanning and it does, it does it for you. You should see the laser come on. If you don't see the laser come on after you've pressed start scanning, uh, we've got a bit of an issue. So uh, once it's done, it will say um, in the status, done. And then literally all you need to do is click save calculated values. And that's how you do that. Right. Changing brushes is quite basic. Um, literally two screws, one holding one in, one holding the other one in. Uh, four mil Allen key. Don't lose the screws. Um, 30,000 milking is, is the recommended um, brush change. But obviously, farmer's discretion comes into this quite a bit where if you think the, the brushes are a bit dirty or um, if, you, if you're changing them, you help. I know a couple of farmers we've got um, dip them in paracetic acid overnight. Um, and they're happy doing that. They, I think they change them once or twice a week. Um, obviously, they're reusing the ones that they've soaked in paracetic. Um, removing the brush, uh, brush hair from, from the motor is actually quite important because obviously the, if more hair gets jammed, the rollers won't spin. And then it's a new brush motor. So uh, that is very important is um, cleaning that hair from underneath the brushes. So obviously two, two, two screws and another two minute job and it could save you a massive cell count with a few cows. Like I said, 30,000 milkins um, or farmer's discretion. If you want to say, change them sooner, that's good. But I wouldn't advise to change them over 30,000 milkins. Um, you may see start seeing your uh, milk sample going up for your cell counts. Uh, yeah. 30,000 30, milkins maximum, I would have said.
and you can um, you can get litmus paper to to dip onto your brushes so you can see the concentration of paracetic acid um, on the on the where the pura is in the robot there is a there is a color color chart so you can compare yours to that and see if you've got enough paracetic acid going onto the brushes because um, obviously if you haven't got enough paracetic acid then it's not going to be killing the bugs between each cow it's uh, a really important job and then obviously you've got um, on your T4C if you click on your actual robot in devices you've got your liner change date your brush change date your shut off sleeve cartridge change date and your milk pump change date so you, you've got a history you've got a record there of when things were last changed um, obviously shut off sleeves and milk pumps get changed on services unless they go before but uh, it's always always a handy to look at that and um, you can see if they've been changed recently and it's, uh, just another nice to have one of the most important tasks of the day is to calibrate the robot arm. To do this, test. Yeah, this is um, this is another important uh, robot, arm and then hit start. We do it twice a day. I'm but, uh, It's it should definitely be done once a day, if not twice. Uh, but the more times you do it, the the more accurate the arm will be. Um, takes a couple of minutes um, and this way you can you can hear the festo valves buzzing so the valves on the arm obviously with an a5 you, you haven't got these festo valves but um, with an a4 if if you can see the ram jerking in and out whichever ram it is you know you've got a problem with a festo valve on that ram that is extending a little bit little bit in, in and out all the time um, all these are like these could potentially be um, call out saving tasks really and there you go it does the double bump at the end of the robot and then you press accept and the robot goes back to its uh, position never cut it short of its um, of its calibration because uh, you'll get error arm control um, You'll get an error arm control uh, because obviously the robot hasn't finished its sequence. It, it knows that it's got to get there, so let it get there, and um, you won't you won't have any problems. Um, the front of the robot, above the feed bin, um, you've got a photo cell sensor which I'm pointing at for there. It's very important to keep this clean. Um, if that isn't clean and it, it thinks there's a cow there, the the exit gate won't shut. So, if there's, for example, if there's a if it thinks there's a cow there, it won't let the next cow in until whatever is in its way is gone. So, really important to keep these clean um, once a day. Again, um, I think there's a video of me cleaning. <laughs> So I'm using Lely SCDS cleaner. I just cleaned the, the uh, ID reader. So that is what reads the responders on the cow. I just get the bit of, bit of mud off the end of that. And then um, the photo cell is important as well. That the, really important that they're clean. Also the 3D camera needs to be cleaned because this determines the position of the cow. As you can see with this one, the, the cobwebs are cobwebs are are a nightmare. Um, the camera thinks that there is a cow in the box because the cobwebs are covering the camera. And if you can see the arm like mo moving underneath the cow like this, it's it's because the there's something blocking the camera um, really important to keep this clean also when you do clean it as you can see in the next video um, I don't press too hard 
I, well, I don't press at all on it really. I, all, literally all I do is um, give it a nice, nice clean because obviously the camera needs to be at a six degree angle. So it's basically like that. D don't, don't move it because um, it's, it's obviously set at that because it knows exactly where the cow should be standing in the box. So as the cow moves, the arm moves with it. So this is, this is uh, really important. Again, if you've got a lot of failed milkings or whatever, it could just be that the, the camera needs cleaning. Right. Right, MQCC2. This is the reagent. Um, I can't stress enough that how clean this process needs to be. You need to clean the, the drum that you mix it in. You need to clean the container that you put the mixture into. Uh, really important that there's no cross-contamination with old mix and the new mix. So I, I give it a good thorough clean. Then what I do is I fill this up to the 15 litre mark. We have a 15 litre drum. Uh, obviously I fill it up to the 15, there's a, there's a line on the drum, 15 litres. Uh, fill it up with water to that 15 litres. Um, of clean water and then all you have to do then is add your one litre bottle of Astri cell concentrate and um, give it a good shake so it's mixing and then all you do then is fill up the drum but uh, it's really important that you do not um, cross contaminate the mixture because it will result in a breakdown and your cell count will not give an accurate reading if it will work at all. Um, we've had a lot of issues with the cell um, that actually does all the work and finds this and reads the cell count. We've had a lot of problems with them as the mixture hasn't been done properly. Um, and that this is this is a really important job. If you have this, this is an extra on robot. Um, not everybody will have it. It's a nice to have. Um, we definitely wouldn't buy a robot without it. Uh, this, this job literally takes five minutes. Um, and, it's, and again, it's so important. That, um, I'm not sure about everyone else, but without this, I, I, I don't know what we'd be doing at home, but uh, yeah, it's a really good tool. And uh, if you look after the tool, the tool will look after you. And I'm gonna give it a good shake. About five seconds. So we don't get cross contamination. And now I clean the jug out. I know a lot of people are leaving that little bit at the bottom and just adding to the top of it, so you're not really. Um, you're not really going to gain anything from that. You're just going to cause problems. Um, whatever's left in the bottom, throw away. Um, just so you know, you've got fresh, fresh stuff in the in the in the bottle. Um, just just to save on issues and, like I said, five minute job.
and could save a, a few hours work. I always put the, the gauze in um, just in case. I know that the barrel's clean because I've just cleaned it, but you never know. So yeah, never add, never add fresh mix to an old mix. Always tip out whatever's in the drum. Um, I don't know if you've noticed, you, you've got little pipes inside the cell count reader, the MQCC2. Uh, you might see a bit of black in, in, the, in the pipe. Um, if you just squeeze it through with your finger, um, you, you, can, you can get rid of it. Um, I know in the new service schedule that it's part of the service now, um, but it doesn't get done every service. And without looking, I couldn't tell you um, how often it's done, but um, I know it's definitely in the service that I did it today. Back on. Can also be by pushing through the uh, in the pipe. Yeah, there might be a bit of gunk in it, so if you just squeeze squeeze it out the pipe, this will also save you having problems in the future as well. Got the pipe on the MQCC2 and the pipe on the drum. Test test menu. Accessories. MQCC2. Sensor values. Cell probes. Uh, to determine a new value. I do read out what the values are supposed to be. Um, bear with it a second. I was just finding them on my phone. <laughs> oh. No, oh, maybe I didn't then. As um, I hope I've I hope I've not bored everyone. Uh, is anybody still awake? Yeah, we are. We are, Tom. That was fantastic. Well done. Well, that was really good. And we're testing a bit of new technology there as well with the, um, with the videos, pre-recorded videos. So, um, yeah, that was, that was really good. That. Thank you very much. And I, uh, I enjoyed uh, learning a few things myself there. So what we'll do now is we'll, uh, if it's all right with you, Tom, we'll, we'll hold out for a couple of questions. Um, see what comes in. I think we may have some in the chat. Let's just see if we can open that up and see. Um, oh no, we just got some uh, some nice comments. Right, being very good. So I'll just set this off, uh, asking if we've got any questions to come through on the chat. Is anyone out there what would like to unmic themselves and, and ask some questions? Well, we've got you, uh, well, we've got Tom on. We've got a couple of uh, other engineers in the background as well who um, can support Tom with some of these uh, questions. Right, we've got one here. Um, got a couple. So how often do you change the MQCC2 solution? Well, um, you get you get an alarm to say that uh, there's been no cell count detected. Um, but obviously, if you're checking the robot every day, you can just open the door and and you can see how much is left. And at the bottom, you can see where it comes out. As long as you don't let it run dry, basically, you're you should be alright to change it uh, whenever you whenever you see it going down below that level. If that makes sense. Yeah, so you keep your eye on it, but there will be an alarm at some point. 
if uh, if you've not been able to to check it on a regular basis. Yeah. Perfect. And we have another question. Do you have trouble with MQCC with different water types? Um, I think there is. I think there is with different water types. Um, obviously, when you when you um, put the robot in, you have a water you have a water test done, and obviously, Lely give you a specification of what your water should be. Uh, and if your water matches that spec then um, there shouldn't be a problem. Um, it's, a lot of it's to do with the mixing of the reagent. If the, if the mix is done properly, um, you, shouldn't, you shouldn't have any problems. I, I, don't think, I don't think water quality will make a huge difference with the reading anyway. It's, um, it's more to do with how you mix it. Yeah, yeah, brilliant. Thank you. Um, do we have any more questions out there? While well, we've got some uh, engineers on the webinar, we have one now. Uh, yeah, we've got one coming in. It's a it's a good uh, message. Um, have these points on a laminated sheet and kept with the robot. It's more a um, a suggestion than a question, a direct question. But yeah, good good point there. And you can even have a swatch of uh, laminated um, points or uh, hints and tips, and uh, we can get them. So if there's bespoke ones, if there's ones that customers would prefer, and, and you can have five or 10 or whatever, we can get them laminated if that's easy, easier for you. Uh, that's not a problem to do that. Any other questions for anybody? Good crowd. <laughs> uh, well, no, it, it's uh, you've obviously done a good job, Tom. Well, I don't know. Have you just sent everybody to sleep, or I, I no, <laughs> no, no? I can see them. That everyone's still active. Uh, um, yeah, it's uh, you've obviously raised quite a few things. Yeah, and then just be, uh, being added to with the with in the question um, in the group chat that uh, to raise those points at the start. At start up to make sure that um, everyone knows what needs to be done. Yeah, thank you, Morris. Yeah, it's thank you, Morris. Tom. Yeah. Yeah, it was a nice bit of um, video in there. We've, we've not tried that in one of the webinars yet, where we uh, we run the video as well and then have the presenter there talking us through the video. That's something we can uh, look at doing again. Ah, thank you for the birthday wishes. Yeah, another year older. Don't feel it. One day it might catch me up. Okay. Is there any other checks new customers need to be aware of, Tom? Um, on an A5, it's basically the same principle. Um, you have you obviously haven't got the festo valves. Um, you can also well, there is loads of checks you could do. You could you could spend all day checking the robot, but um, these are your necessities. Um, obviously, you can check nuts nuts and bolts. Um, you can go around checking cables. Um, the list is endless. You can you can check everything on the robot every day if you wanted to. Um, but um, these are just your basics. Um, what you should be doing. Um, yeah, it's no different to a, a new robot. These checks still need to be done regardless, um, just for, um, um, just for your, um, for your benefit really, because the more checks you do, the, the less breakdowns you have and the happier you, you will be and, uh, everyone's a winner. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Any other questions from anybody? Just to elaborate slightly on that, during the startup process, you will be given a sales to service document. Inside that document is a complete checklist of daily, monthly and yearly checks. Okay, yeah. 
Yeah, and then uh, if there's any really pertinent ones or ones that are very important for, for certain customers, then we can do uh, laminated sheets on the robot. As well as even just photocopies out of that sales to service uh, manual. So yeah, just let us know. Is the one on liner change, uh, Liam? It's not a how-to guide. It's a more a refresher to say what was needed to be checked rather than what oh, okay. process you go through. Right. So maybe, um, yeah, a laminate for that would be good then. If I'm uh, understanding you correctly. And that can be something we can roll out to, uh, to customers. That's no problem. My crypto factor here for those who are, who are old enough to remember. I don't know what that is. <laughs> yeah, it was awesome. It was a really good show. Yeah, they, they tested mental and physical agility. Um, yeah, enjoy. Yeah, Morris remembers it as well. Yeah, I can't remember what night of the week it was. It might have been Thursday. Um, yeah, that and Tomorrow's World were my favorite. But yeah, you won't remember them, Tom. No. Before yeah. my time. Yeah. <laughs> Digress slightly. Uh, any anyone else with any other questions for the engineers while we've got them? They are quite elusive out, out of hours. We we often don't uh, we're not fortunate enough. So get them while you can. I think that's it, Tom. I think we're um, I think we can let you let you leave. Lawrence, brilliant. Uh, yeah, thank, thank you. you very much for that, Tom. Uh, much appreciated. Um, thank you for everybody who's who's attended. Um, we we can pass them on if um, we we need to. Um, remember as well that uh, yeah, if you've got a tough question um, and it, it's maybe not appropriate to, to the engineer, it maybe not be that technical. It might be about feeding. Might be about the the chemicals themselves. We do have the FMS department as well. So both Sam and Izzy can answer that some of those um, more user kind of friendly um, questions that you may have. So uh, yeah, just, uh, just keep that in mind as well. Another one in two weeks time, as I mentioned our colleague um, from Lady Atlantic will be hosting that one, which is on uh, Area Excel, but there'll be a lot of um, uh, information there for all all sizes of farms so I, I would recommend highly recommend joining that one it will be recorded so if you can't make it we can pass it on and yeah have a have a great evening the rest of the evening and thank you very much to tom and everyone attending thank you thank you everyone thank you sorry if i bored you <laughs> you didn't tom it was fantastic Thanks, thank you tom. Very much. really good